Hi there, welcome to the CBT Nuggets Micro Nugget entitled Dynamic Access Control Part 2, Managing Resource Properties. My name is Tim Warner. If you watched Part 1 of this Micro Nuggets mini-series, and I certainly hope you have, you have a basic understanding of what Dynamic Access Control means in Windows Server 2012, and you also understand the user and device side of the equation, namely the claim. In this part, part two, we're going to look at the other side of the equation with dynamic access control, and that is the resource property. This deals with a larger subject called file classification infrastructure, in which we can tag files and folders with meaningful descriptors, and we can take action on files and folders depending upon the tags that they contain. With dynamic access control, that means deploy discretionary access control lists that use conditional logic. We also can take advantage of auditing, expanded auditing capability in Windows Server 2012, where we again can use conditional logic and look, for instance, for successful and failed access attempts on only files that are tagged, let's say, personally identifiable information equals yes. You see what I mean? But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself. In our next part, we'll take a look at the third leg of this step stool, so to speak, and that's the central access rule and the central access policy. In the meantime, let's get right into the demo so I can show you how we create those resource properties in Windows Server 2012. Here we are on a Windows Server 2012 Data Center Edition domain controller named HVNugget1. And as you'll recall, we configure dynamic access control through Active Directory Administrative Center. I prefer, of the two views available, I prefer the tree view to the list view. That's just my own preference though. You'll see we have two nodes dealing with resource properties. We have resource properties and resource property lists. Properties deal with the individual items that constitute your file classification infrastructure. It should be noted that these are the starter properties that Microsoft gives us out of the box. They're disabled by default. We can enable them just by right-clicking and selecting Enable. And these are global to your domain. By contrast, if you've used File Server Resource Manager, we can create local properties on a server-by-server -server basis there. But in my opinion, the resource property is much, much better. Microsoft, I think, gave us a nice representative smattering of metadata tags that we'd be interested in. Compliancy, department, discoverability, folder usage, impact. Each one of these properties has a friendly name, an ID, a data type, and then suggested values. So if we look at impact, for instance, you'll see that this is of the ordered list data type, and the choices to which we can add and edit, as you see down here, are low, moderate, and high. Let's create a new resource property right now. We can right-click the resource properties node, and go to New Resource Property, give it a name, I'll call it Project Type. Let's say our organization has an internal set of standards in terms of how we define or classify our projects. We next choose a data type. Let's say that it's a single value choice. So we're going to present administrators with a list of suggested values, but only one can be active at any time. So down in the Suggested Values area, we'll add in and let's say we have a project type 1 called PT1. I'll click OK. We'll add in PT2. You can make the value and display name different if you want to. I'm making them the same just for ease of use. And there you have it. So the resource properties are your individual tags. Just for grins, I'm going to enable a couple extras just at random. The deployable unit to your file server, though, is the resource property list. By default, Microsoft gives you a built-in list called Global Resource Property List. You can also build your own that contain just a subset of available resource properties. That's what I'll do right now. We'll right-click, create a new resource property list called Project Metadata. And then for Resource Properties, we'll click Add, and we just simply choose from any enabled properties. Let's just say we want to bring in Impact, and let's also bring in our Project Code. I don't actually remember which one I created. It looks like there's Project, Project Type. You have to keep straight what you've done, for sure. But I think this is fine to get us started. We can click OK, and then OK again 
to complete the configuration. Now let's move over to our file server. What you'll want to do on your file server is open up an administrative PowerShell prompt and run update FSRM classification property definition. This will download any new or changed resource properties that are defined in Active Directory. It's similar in function to GP update when you think about it. Now of course our file server has to have the file server role installed and we need to have file server resource manager available as well. Speaking of which I'll jump into that very very quickly to show you that if we look at classification properties in FSRM you'll notice here that the local scope are ones that are created just on this particular server the ones that are global applicable across the entire domain of course deal with dynamic access control resource properties so they're available here and you can do things like configure access denied assistance and so on and so forth let me know in the comments if you'd like training on that subject I'd be happy to do another micro nugget there where the rubber meets the road here is where you actually on your file server begin to classify your objects you can do this for both folders and files we right click and go to properties and navigate to the classification tab this gives you any global properties that came from dynamic access control or local properties that are available just on that file server. And notice that we have our project type property and we can make a selection down below. So we can just do this again just for grins. I'll make this guy project type 3 and so forth. Now, of course, you're probably thinking, well, Tim, I've got hundreds of thousands of documents. I can't sit here or even hire somebody necessarily to tag all of the files individually. It'll take me forever. Two things I want to let you know. One, Microsoft has a solution accelerator called the Data Classification Toolkit. I'd suggest you download and look at it. It's perfectly free, although beyond our scope to discuss past that right now, I'm afraid. I also want to bring back File Server Resource Manager one final time to let you know that you can create classification rules that you can run on a schedule even that will scour your directory trees that you specify and even go inside files to look for keywords. Confidential, maybe you're looking for project codes contained in the file. You can use regular expressions to search for social security numbers or credit card numbers. And then most importantly, you can automatically apply a particular tag. So this one I have here looks for social security numbers. It's scoped to my human resources folder. And if I go into configure, you can see my regex expression that looks for social security numbers types and will assign the PII, that's personally identifiable information property, to a value of yes. So this is extremely powerful and I would say a must-have step for you to do file classification with or without dynamic access control. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.